There it is. Howdy, 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 and welcome to Thriving in the Transition, the podcast, episode 17. I'm humbled and blessed to be able to bring this podcast to you and be part of your lives. Yeah, I do say this every week, but that's because I mean it every week. Your feedback, your encouragement, and connection make it all worthwhile. I'm starting to fully comprehend the journey that I'm on now, and I've got to say, I'm loving it. Just like ordering at McDonald's or in a McDonald's commercials. So, ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Doing this and connecting with you is truly, truly amazing and inspirational for me. I hope you feel the same. So, yay me, yay you, and yay us. As we continue to grow and broaden our audience here, give us that five-star rating. Follow us, subscribe, add positive comments, like us, or give us a thumbs up. You know, whatever your weapon of choice is, what I'm ultimately trying to say is you should connect with us. You should engage with us. There's safety in numbers, after all. We're now up and available on Anchor FM, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Google Podcasts, Overcast. We're now up and available on Anchor FM, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and Spotify. Simply search for us wherever you listen to great podcasts. We strive to be among that list of great podcasts that you listen to, that you rely upon, and that you ultimately find useful. Why am I doing this? Why ask why? Just go with it. Let it happen. We're about to make some magic here, you and I. So I guess I'm doing this to bring a little more magic into the world. I'm doing this for all the kids that used to believe in magic and grew into adults that apparently have forgotten that special feeling of amazement and wonder. So, abracadabra, hocus pocus, poof. Stay tuned and watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat later. The truth, the real truth, is simply, I want to practice what I preach. I absolutely believe that part of my purpose in this life is to connect with others and bring people together, especially in a time where you need only look at the news and see how torn and divided we are. I want to highlight and exemplify the fact that we've got more in common than we do in difference. Yeah, 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 the differences are much easier to identify, but discovering and appreciating those commonalities is much more fun. Even magical, one might say. So yeah, that's partly why I'm doing this. The other part, or the rest of the story, as to why I'm doing this is I want to shine a light, a big, bright, beaming spotlight on those slightly enigmatic, charismatic, and inspirational people among us. I want to share their stories about thriving in and during transitions. That theory being that hearing about other people succeed will give anyone that may be struggling with the motivation or encouragement the ability to continue to thrive in their own respective transitions. This week is no different. I'm going to keep it up. This week, you get to hear from a leadership champion, an entrepreneur, and a good friend. Someone that continues to inspire and support me. We're going to be chatting about this thing we call adaptability and flexibility. We believe there's power there. The truth is you have to be flexible. You have to be adaptable. And my guest, Clinton Jennett, he's going to share some of his amazing experiences and insights on that very topic, the power of being adaptable and flexible. And we're going to jump feet first 
into that topic right after this break. Man, I can't thank Clint enough for those tips, those pointers, and his bravery, right? He really shared of himself in this episode, and I love him for that. In case you missed it, here's a quick recap of our conversation on the power of flexibility and adaptability. The first thing that stood out, this notion of embracing vulnerability. There really is opportunity in vulnerability. And I think you've heard that in just about every conversation, every interview, and from every guest that I've had on the show. So embrace vulnerability. Be yourself. Take risks. There's a payoff, right? There's a benefit for you. You may call it growth. You may call it whatever, but there's something there for you. Clint pointed out that change is a 100% constant, right? Sounds contradictory, but it's, it's not. Everything is changed. Everything is always changing. The world is changing. You're changing. The weather, the list goes on and on. Change is 100% constant. See and accept change, right? You can't rebel. You can't hide from it. You can't fight it. It's going to happen no matter how much you dig in. Within all change exists this opportunity to grow related to that being vulnerable part, right? You have to expand and connect with others in order to accept that growth and see that opportunity. Change is there to work for us and not against us. Again, I think natural human tendency is to fight the change, to be in control, to be the captain of your own ship, whatever you want to call it, however you want to describe it. The reality is change is a good thing. Whether it's being comfortable with discomfort, as Sarah Zadigan and I talked about, that discomfort is there to represent change. It's the physical manifestation of that change. You're going to get to a better spot. You're going to be better off. If you embrace that, change is no longer that difficult. Your transition isn't as difficult as you think it was because change there to work for you and not against you. Don't focus on the door that has closed. You may miss all the doors that are opening, right? With transition, Clint and I also did a, a little nod to Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and her five stages of grief. Change is a grieving process. However, if you focus on what you have to gain versus what you're losing, you'll be in a better spot. That's all we're saying here, right? Not focusing on the door that's closed, focus on the door that's open. Focus on what you have to gain versus what you're losing. Now, Clint dropped a bomb on me with this one. Practice makes progress. Again, I've heard pra practice makes perfect, practice makes permanent, all those things. Practice makes progress, and it's true. Any exact goal can take you away from learning and adaptability and flexibility. So your goals have to be flexible. You have to be flexible as you attain those goals. It's all about that incremental growth. It's not about huge single steps. Let me work on myself for 39 years and then boom, I'll be there. No, it's the little incremental changes that are going to get you there. Practice makes progress. Connection is a birthright. We all want to be connected to something, to someone, to a goal, to a mission, to a quest. Just think of Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, right? As crazy as people thought Don Quixote was, he wanted to be connected. He wanted to have this greater purpose. He had it. People didn't understand it, but he did. He went after it. Connection is a birthright. Now, every week, somehow, whatever I talk about seems to feed into what's going on with society. I guess because I'm a part of society. As we talk about Black Lives Matter, as we talk about respect, as we talk about trust, as we talk about policing reform and policy, it's still about connection. 
it occurred to me in a very casual conversation, part of the disconnect is that the police are no longer part of the community in which they serve. If you think back in the day, again, I I'm a, grew up in the 80s, a, a child of the 70s. We knew the policemen that patrolled the neighborhood. They were part of the community. They, li they lived around the corner or down the block or what have you. That's not the case. We're missing that connection. It's easy to mistreat, misunderstand, abuse, label, put in a box, whatever, people that you are not connected with, people you don't know, people that don't matter. Bring back the connection, people. That, it's, it's that simple, in my opinion. Bring back that connection. It's a birthright. Another bomb that Clint dropped on us. In all shades of gray, there exists light. And it's a true statement. If you're an art buff, whatever the case, it, there is some light in every shade of gray. So don't focus on the darkness. Again, it may be another way of rephrasing, not focusing on that closed door. But be optimistic. Be positive. Look for the light. Focus on the light to get you through the gray. Which bleeds right into, which leads right into your power is determined by your mindset. I'm, of all quotes and lyrics that just popped in my head, snap. You, I got the power. You snap. That, that snap. He's got this lyric, what good is a tank with a stupid driver? That's what I'm reminded of here. Your power is determined by your mindset. Weak, confused, hateful mindsets produce weak and confused results, regardless of the vehicle you're in. A strong, power, positive, optimistic mindset, yes, produces strong, positive, powerful results. What good's a tank with a stupid driver? I'll leave it at that. Talk about creativity. I got real creative with that one. Creativity can be fostered by routine. Now, I had to think twice about this one. Being an artist, I really think of creativity as free-flowing and the lack of rules, the absence of routine. I used to think that I was at my creative best without that structure, without those routines. Clint got me thinking, if you put in the practice, again, practice makes progress. If you set up a routine, if you set up structure, if you create a container in which all you do is create, creativity can be fostered by that routine. And I'm amazed by that, and I'm gonna switch up some things. In fact, even the way I, I create, produce, edit this podcast, I, I have a routine, I have a pattern. I overshared with you last week or the week before. On It was the week before, last week was Sarah's date again. So two weeks ago, my timeline for creating this podcast. There is a structure there. And because I've had the practice, I can like, oh, it's Saturday. Let me turn on the creative faucets and I can write. Absent of that, I don't know if I would have been able to be as consistent with delivering my creative results in the form of this podcast. So creativity can be fostered by routine. Courage means sharing your voice and your authentic self with the world. Now, this is where I have to give a, another huge monumental shout out to Clint. He is a courageous individual and always has been, and I guarantee he won't think of himself that way, but I do, and I'm saying it right now on the air. And for everyone listening, share your voice, share your thoughts. That's what really makes the world go round. In this crazy time on, dare I say, the back end of COVID-19, I don't know if that's fair, but during COVID-19, this pandemic, the killing of George Floyd, all the ensuing unrest and confusion and anger, there have been so many acts of courage and bravery sharing that voice in what you see is wrong 
folks being the change that they want to see in the world, folks being vulnerable by asking for help, other people being vulnerable by looking at the other side, looking for those commonalities, those points of connection. And it's a beautiful thing, and that's the stuff that's going to get us through. Not being deterred by what leaders say or think, not listening to false campaign promises, not buying into the hype in whatever form it takes, whether that's Facebook or Instagram or Tumblr or LinkedIn or the nightly news. Focus on that courage, sharing your voice, listening for those authentic voices, because you know when you hear an authentic voice. No one has to tell you, oh my God, listen to that. That's an authentic voice. You know it. Focus on that. Trust yourself. Clint also talked about embracing change. Now we've said this a couple times here, but embrace that change or that transition for what it could be versus what it appears to be. And all of this was centered around taking that pause, listening to yourself, understanding why you're feeling what you're feeling. Think about it. We heard the same thing from Sarah Zadigan last week, right? You have to put yourself front and center in your transition in order to get the most of it. Things don't happen all willy-nilly. Things don't happen by coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. Back to a, a hero of mine, Louis Pasteur, chance favors the prepared mind. There, there are no coincidences. There, there are no accidents. It's whether or not you're in a place to take advantage of the opportunities as they present themselves. And the last point here, self-love needs to be your number one companion during your transition. Now, I'm going back several weeks to Lori Mulligan as we talked about self-love and self-care. Even the bit that we do in every conversation about the love song that you would introduce yourself. And by the way, another shout out to Clint, right? This man sang his song. Talk about authenticity and courage and bravery and killed it. And that just got me so fired up. And I suspect it's going to do the same for you, or it did the same for you as you listen to it. But self-love needs to be your number one companion. There were so many relevant points in that conversation. They just kept coming. And I enjoyed every single moment. I hope, I really hope that you found as many things to take away from that conversation as I did. And if you paid any attention whatsoever to that conversation with Clint, I promise you will thrive in the transition. All right, folks, that brings us to the end of Thriving in the Transition, episode 17. Thank you for joining and thanks for allowing me the opportunity to be myself. If you're getting something from this podcast, please give us that elusive five-star rating wherever you listen to your podcast. Subscribe and add us to the list of the other great podcasts that you listen to. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook at, at Logic Consulting, all one word, L-O-G-I-Q, Consulting. Follow me on Instagram at Logic Coach, L-O-G-I-Q underscore Coach. Follow me on Spotify at GQ Down. Now, that's the music version. Of course, the podcast is available on Spotify as well. Check that out, of course. The playlist that I want you to check out, it's called Thriving in the Transition, the Music. It stands alone. It speaks for itself. Check it out. Reach out on LinkedIn at DJ Will Rock. Don't forget the YouTube channel where you get to see a video version of this podcast. See me do my thing on video. No big deal. You know, just throw up a camera, record it, put it on YouTube. We're all good. Yes, there is a website, thrivinginthetransition.com. www.thrivinginthetransition.com. Get all your episodes right there. There is a podcast tab there. All the episodes, you're up to date. And see how else we can connect. Any number of ways. I'll speak at your group, your organization. I'll talk to you on the phone. You want to be a guest? You got something to say? Let me know. Lastly, if you're interested in supporting this podcast and helping us grow, if you believe in what I'm doing, 
send me an email. Send me a tweet, an IM, a direct message, whatever. You'll find a sponsorship button on my homepage on Anchor FM, www.anchor.fm forward slash TITT. TITT for Thriving in the Transition. Again, look for that support button. Most importantly, don't keep this magic to yourself. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your coworkers, tell your children, tell everybody that you found some magic and you want to share the magician's greatest secret, how to thrive in the transition. Until the next episode, folks, cheers. Have a great day.